Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT. Don, I'm Mike the Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. TNT, this story comes straight from Canada, the place where everyone loves each other. They love them like a brother. Fun fact, did you know that Canada has like thousands and thousands of lakes? They're the land of a thousand lakes? Yeah. Oh. More lakes than uh, any other. You know country. what that's from? What's that? The giant ice age where the where the glaciers came down and rutted all the land, and then when it melted, there was holes. Yeah, I heard when the glaciers migrate that they do that. You never heard about the glacier migration in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Our forefathers used to ride these things in the battle. George Washington rode a goddamn glacier right into <laughs> Plymouth Rock. <laughs> so anyways. Uh, so they're, they're in, in Ontario, Canada, sure. there is a uh, guy, Steele family. Okay. Charles Steele. He is the he is the mayor of an Ontario town. I don't know the name of it. Toronto, maybe. Mm-hmm. We'll say it's Toronto. So he has a brother. He hasn't spoken to his brother in thirty years. Yep, that, you know, fair. Doesn't say why, but he figured out that he didn't. The brother brother said, "I don't like how my brother's brother and mayor stuff." So he's running against him. So two brothers running against each other. For mayor, and they haven't spoken in 30 years. So the first time they've spoken in 30 years is going to be when they debate each other to run the government of a town. That that debate could easily... Escalate quickly? ...devolve into a fist fight, yeah. Yeah, he's just like, what's what's your your view on pollution in Toronto? And he's like, just like when you told mom when we were six. (laughs) (laughs) Just turns into like a, like immediately into a counselor's therapy session for them. That's so weird. I always wonder how how families end up like that. I don't really talk to my brother and sister either. But it's not though, because so. you just like you had a falling out and you're just like I'm never talking uh, to you again. I just I ain't got nothing to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say to you. I don't know what's up. Yeah, like I mean, I guess. What we gotta say? I mean, I can get. I guess I understand it <laughs> because if like. I think people hold on to their family a lot longer than they should sometimes because it's the same relationship. If someone's a toxic person in your life, you should cut them out. Whether it's your mom, whether it's your brother, whether it's a friend, whether it's a coworker, whether it's yourself. Well, yeah, right. I mean, that's an odd one, but yes. Um, but yeah, but like people are like, well, I can, it's my family. If I don't have family, I'm like, yeah. but if they're making you goddamn miserable, like yeah, yeah, what, but... where are you better off? Just being on your own and not dealing with that toxic ass relationship or <laughs> dealing with mom, even though every time you hang up the phone with her, you hate yourself for three days because uh... of the way she talks to you. Like, how do you deal with that? Right? So if someone in your family really F's you over, like, you know, some people's families are shitty, dude. Like they'll. Open up credit cards in their name. They'll rip them oh, off. They'll steal geez. from them. They'll, yeah, yeah, they'll do never. stuff that's like, like anyone who did, like, if my mom opened up a goddamn credit card in my name and ran up like $30,000 in debt. She get that. I would probably have a hard time talking to her moving forward. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 100%, but she can get that. She could get that off, but nah, the relationship's done. Yeah, like I ain't going to go beat the F out of her <laughs> or send her to jail or anything. Beat your mom up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fam, that's nuts. I'm not gonna like. I feel like I would have to. I would have to stop you if you. I would never like. Right, but but I guess my point. Like, is, but, like, walking... Okay, but if your dad ran up thirty thousand dollars in debt, would you fight your dad? Yeah. So see what I mean? Like that's, that's different though. <laughs> yeah, but what I guess what my point is like I probably wouldn't even have her arrested. That's such. Y- that. That's y- different. You know, like if if my mom or my my dad or my if my family did something like ran up debt under my name. I would probably disown them and never talk to them again. I probably would not press charges against them because I, e- even though they're my family, I don't want them to spend the rest of their life in jail, right? But I would not talk to you for 30 years because of that, for sure. There's nothing you could say other than here's $30,000 that would make me even want – and then I'd be like, thank you, and then still never talk to you again for the rest <laughs> of your life, right? So there are reasons that I see why people cut people out of their yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But a lot of them are petty. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I don't I mean, know. I've, I've never really had like any of these issues with my No, family. I'm not petty. So And plus I'm I'm good at just like cutting people out anyway. So I've no, I don't know. I've never had that cognitive dissonance. I'm usually like, oh okay. 
Just, I'm <laughs> yeah. done. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. And that's usually how it works for me when I cut people out. Like, it'll be like a slow burn of like, man, this person's kind of irking me a little bit. Yeah. Like, and then all of a sudden, I'm just like, I'm just not going to talk. I'm just not going to call them anymore. Yeah. And then if they call you, like, maybe you'll talk to them. And then, like, eventually it just goes to be like, eh, I'm not even going to call them back. <laughs> like, it just, it's like a slow burn. We had that conversation. Uh, I, I don't, like, uh, last party that we had, we had a conversation with some people and we were talking about, like, really? was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were a little intoxicated. It's all right. It was sort the end of the night when okay. you were just you were sitting in your chair just kind of like Stevie wondering a dude, little I bit. Dude, I do that when I get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I feel the vibe and I'm like, yeah, yeah you were just doing, like, what's up? And I'm like, huh? You were just doing the Stevie Wonder. It was all good. All you were right, still cool, on cool. top of stuff. All right, good, um, good. But uh, somebody was like talking about like apologizing to a friend. Because, oh, I remember this. And then it was, and then I had, I, I had like a, a moment where I just interjected and I was like, well, certain behavior Everybody fucks up. So certain behavior, yeah, you're going to see somebody's going to mess up, piss you off or say something mean. It's okay if they do it once or even once in a while. But if it's over a constant and it just becomes Trends. like, yeah, if it yeah. becomes like a behavior that you already know is going to happen, it's like, you know, I'm not dealing with that. Then, yeah, you need to either a say something. Or B, you need to get rid of that person. Yeah, because everybody yeah. messes up, man. Like, yeah. I've hurt people's feelings that I definitely didn't mean to. Exactly. Like, I mean, I did something. I'm like, oh, crap. I was supposed to do something with you, and I forgot, and I feel bad about that. Exactly. Or, like, or I had to flake last. I don't. I try not to flake and do But, like, it's happened. I've, I've canceled on people pretty last minute before. Not ve very rarely. I usually always do it even if I don't want to, which is probably poor boundary setting on my part now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> poor boundary setting. You freaking millennial. Yeah, but... uh. <laughs> What, dude? It's real. It's a real thing. I know, but I hate it. I hate it. Um, <laughs> it's so but yeah, soft. like, but, right, what? Ahead. It sounds so soft. Yeah, is that does, what you said? It sounds soft. I'm sorry. Does it? Yeah, a little bit. Setting boundaries sounds soft. Let's get into that then. What do you? <laughs> How is setting a boundary soft? I think setting a boundary. We're not gonna unpack. We're not gonna discuss your feelings. Let's talk about boundaries. No, I want to talk about boundaries. If this you, is why uh, I turn this into a psychiatric so, session. No, but so you you think it's better to not set boundaries? You want me to bro boil some rose petal tea, pinky out? I wow, you're, I mean, wow. Are we in 1965 right now? My, yeah, let's go back, Jonas. <laughs> let's go back to 1965. <laughs> so. Anyways, let me park your car for you. Wow, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? That's, wow, that's all you would let me do? That escalated quickly. <laughs> that's all you let me do. <laughs> but uh, what were we talking about before I got in the boundary track? I, yeah, I don't know. I set boundaries all the time. Yeah, but uh, definitely, my boundaries are pretty pretty clear though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, think. and uh, I think. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I will. I will open up the Crazy Town boundary case. So there, was, like, I remember distinctly when you you didn't say this to me as a boundary setting thing, but like you set an expectation of like, hey, if I'm in my room, just shoot me a text. You don't gotta knock on the door. You don't gotta like whatever. And I was like. That's reasonable. And like was yeah. like, okay. But I very well could have been like, F that boundary and just been like, dunk, 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 dunk. <laughs> D, D, what's going on, buddy? You want to hang out, dude? Like, <laughs> but like, but I feel like, and that's a simple, that's a simple uh, boundary. Like, yeah. that's a simple example of like setting boundaries when they're not even really a boundary, but it is kind of a boundary. <laughs> All right, fine. You want to turn this into a fucking slinky intro? No, topic. it's almost you over. Know, so. No, no, we're not tighter than one now. <laughs> you, know what, you know what my, my <laughs> love language is, Jonas? Is Leaving that, you alone? <laughs> <laughs> is that I understand that it is difficult to cohabitate with another person. So I try to provide that person what I value. And that would be um, like the living alone experience when that is when that's when that's wanted or when that's needed and you never really know when a person needs that or you know the inverse but i'm not really responsible for the inverse okay i feel like i can be responsible for uh giving you like jonas had a, a young lady over last night and i was like all right cool I'm on be ghost. You know, you got the whole apartment run to yourself. The funny part about that is I literally told you ahead of time that yeah. it was just a friend coming over to hang out. Yeah, but I figured that would just be a courtesy so I don't walk out in my drawers. Oh, you know, well. like it, that's fine. Yeah, so I don't walk out like Winnie the Pooh in it like we usually do. <laughs> well, and that's why I give you a heads up. Too. Like exactly. you, walk, you walk out Winnie the Pooh and you're like, oh, there's somebody at the house. Yeah, and usually we walk out Winnie the Pooh. We like do a <laughs> high five and then we continue about our day. 
<laughs> it's customary. So, like, I was like, okay, well, last thing I would really want is for my my friend, no matter who the hell that is, to come out while I'm trying to riz up a chick. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll just, I'll take it easy. I'm perfectly fine with being in, I have everything I need in my room. I have water, bathroom, uh, you video You need a games, hot plate and a refrigerator. A sex doll. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> a hot plate and a fridge. You'll never have to leave your room. You just cook in there, have a, have a, like, have your gallons of water in there. Yeah, honestly, you know what? I swear. You I swear. would just go out the back door, hop off the porch. You wouldn't even use the front door. <laughs> I could use the walk. But yeah, yeah, you barricade yourself in. Be like, yeah. this is it. I could start parking in that parking <laughs> yeah, yeah, lot. Yeah, exactly. Hopping up the fence. Honestly, yeah. why the hell don't we ever park? Because there's no direct. Uh, it's not really easy to get up there. I mean, you just walk across the ground. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. But yeah. So that, that's kind of that's kind of where my my ideas come in. Uh, I just was like, yeah, I, I just want to give people. <laughs> the, the common respect. I feel like a social. If you're seeking social in, interaction, you can seek that. But if you're seeking to, uh, for your isolation, for your own personal benefit, or just because you just want to be alone, or you know you, it can be difficult living with another person. So I'm like, you got that time. Yeah, it's no. valuable to me, and I know it's valuable to other people. Maybe you, not as valuable. To them you know what I think is interesting people, though that? about that whole conversation. And this is nothing to have to do sure, with sure, what sure, you sure. said. I've had I've heard numerous people say this. They'll be like, they'll they'll say things like, "Well, I know I would appreciate it if my this is talking about more like romantic than like roommates. Yeah, hundred like, percent. If my partner." wrote me little love notes and yeah. hid them in my lunch and did all this stuff. So I did this for them and they didn't appreciate it. Yeah, and then nah. I go, you can't judge someone else on what you want. That's like, true. Because if you think that making, if you think making this cute romantic little memoir of your relationship and giving it to them would be beneficial, you would love that. Some people don't give a shit about sentimental stuff at all. No. no. So like you can, I, I spent 12 hours making you this collage of our relationship and the person's like, thanks i guess like yeah and like and then they get offended and get hurt and like get all this stuff but it's like you can't judge what somebody else wants based on what you want right so it's like you know that's why they have numerous love languages whether it's physical touch or being spoken to or you know words or time or whatever and i think a lot of people when they're looking for a partner try to treat them the way they think they want to be treated so they use the golden rule rather than using the platinum rule which is treat them the way that they want to be treated and i i have fell into that because, a billion times myself. Because every girl I've ever dated, all I've been like is, so can you just like leave me alone for like an hour? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's they a, won't. I, I think that's a very talking, fair. Dude. I think it's a fair assessment of like. This, is, this won't shut up. I'm wow. sorry. Wow. 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 It's a podcast. I'm podding right now. All right. All right. That's podding. all. Anyways, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Go to thecrazytime.com for Jonas. Love you, ladies. TNT. <laughs> we out. Call me. Call me.